I'm gonna guess your second question is, why are you here? We ran the genome sequence 10 times. This specimen has human DNA. Welcome back to Marvelous Videos. I'm Rylan. In the raving 80s, the Predator franchise was nothing but a breath of fresh air in the monotonous science fiction genre, whereas movies of the time seemingly focused more on the science part of the plot rather than exploring the thrills of action. Predator set itself apart with the deconstruction of various tropes in action films. The film starts with a group of badass paramilitary hunks on a mission where they strike and kill efficiently without any shred of remorse. Do not feel an ounce of fear and throw hilarious punchlines and one-liners while doing so. As protagonists in a typical 80s action film, these men are portrayed as an unstoppable force of nature until a lethal predator appears in the picture and takes them on with full force. This rendered our group of heroes cornered and helpless as no amount of resources, be it military training, advanced weaponry, or even bravado ever stood a chance in front of this predator who is far from being human. All of them are eventually overpowered by the predator until only the one who merges as one with nature and plays the exact same field as that of the predator is successful in defeating him and survives this grand fiasco so in today's episode we will intricately focus on the anatomy of this mind thwarting antagonist so without further ado let's get right into it actually before we do get into our explanation we do have just one very small request if you like our content then please support us by subscribing to our channel this is just a small click for you but for us it means a lot thanks now Let's begin. Bad idea. How tough is the Predator's physique? In terms of their physique, the Predators are incredibly resilient, strong, and agile. With incredible endurance and resistance to physical harm, they also possess sharp claws and mandibles, which they can use to subdue and kill their prey. Even with their tougher bones, the Predators are still often dismembered and even decapitated, so they still fall victim to sharp blades. But the bones can heal well. For example, when an engineer broke the arm off Ahab, it appeared to have healed in just a few days. Now, coming to their skin, it is definitely worth mentioning that the predator skin is so thick that it can even absorb damage from bullets and other weapons. Apart from that, the color and texture of the predator skin can vary between different individuals and clans, but it's generally much thicker and resistant to damage than human skin. But that's not all. The predators also have small spike-like appendages on their arms and chest, as well as on their weird-looking dreadlocks, which likely serve as additional weapons or possibly exist for defensive measures. Imagine trying to grapple with or strike someone who has spikes protruding from their skin. And here's something else that's interesting. The predators typically don't wear any clothing or armor on their skin. Instead, they prefer to rely on their natural toughness and cloak netting for protection in combat, which allows them to move quickly and silently throughout their environments, making them effective hunters. Lastly, these deadly extraterrestrial entities have a bizarre perchance for collecting bones and skulls, especially the skulls of their victims, even if they have been members of their own race. How long do predators live? While the exact lifespan of a predator is unknown, their longevity and the toll of their lifestyle on their physical appearance and abilities are consistent themes throughout the various stories in which they appear. According to various forms of predator media, including movies, comics, novels, and even video games, the Yauja, or predator species, can live for at least a few several centuries, and even millennia. Kalakta, a recurring character in the predator media, is said to be thousands of years old, and has a first-hand experience of the numerous wars waged by the predators. However, the predators we've seen in the movies have mostly acted alone or in very small groups, and their dangerous lifestyles kind of make it hard to imagine any of them living for a long time. They lose limbs, tusks, or even an eye while fighting. But as they grow older, their skin begins to wrinkle, their dreadlocks start graying, and their reflexes grow weaker. Although their lifestyle is quite dangerous, as mentioned before, the Yauja have tough physiques and strong bones that can heal well. Even though experienced predators often have a lot of scars, their minds remain sharp, and their experience gives them an edge over their opponents. However, like any species, the Yauja are far from immortal, but their years of hunting give them an upper hand on their opponent. So overall, while the Yauja may not live forever, their lifespans are certainly longer than humans. 
What do the dreadlocks in a predator signify? Sometimes we like to think that the designers were inspired by Bob Marley while designing the predator's hair. Well, it is safe to say that our alien antagonists certainly don't rely on human for fashion inputs, as the predator dreadlocks hold a significant meaning. Although they use creepy skulls to decorate and style their hair, the length of a predator's dreadlocks is meant to reflect their skill in battle and suitability as a mate, with short dreadlocks being seen as unattractive by the females of the species. Longer dreadlocks, on the other hand, also signify more more experience or age in the case of a predator. A good chunk of sources indicates that the predators have blood flowing within their dreadlocks, which makes it difficult for them to cut it. Like in human beings, as the predator dreadlocks grow longer, they start to turn gray or white, which has been seen in the case of the ancient or the elder predators. The shaman predator, who is the part of the predator of the lost tribe, is famous for having some of the longest dreadlocks among this alien species. However, some predators have had their dreadlocks removed, such as the captured stoneheart predator, who had all of his dreadlocks chopped off against his wishes as part of a brainwashing program to turn him against his own kind. Other than this, the long hair-like appendages are actually a type of sensory organ that allows the predator to detect changes in temperature and atmospheric pressure. The predators also use the dreadlocks as a means of communication with other members of their species and efficiently camouflage themselves in a high-pressure environment. Overall, it's safe to say that the dreadlocks in a predator's hair serve a multitude of purposes. Are the predator mandibles useful? The mandibles of a predator are extremely useful and incredibly strong, allowing them to use them as weapons in combat. It also serves as their primary mouth, which makes them capable of opening it extremely wide to allow them to consume their prey whole. The mandibles can be used to crush bones, and in some cases, they have been used to swiftly decapitate their victims. It's worth mentioning that it's not possible for the predators to communicate with the help of their mandibles, but the sound of the lobster claw-like attachments is definitely enough to quake their prey with fear. As shown in Predator 2, in Greyback's case, it was verified that the tusks were prone to breaking and definitely did not grow back. However, its sole focus is to act as a defense weapon against enemies and prey, which has proved to be lethal from time to time. Furthermore, the mandibles are also able to sense heat, which helps the predators to locate their prey in a variety of environments. Overall, the mandibles of a predator are a crucial part of their anatomy and contribute to their effectiveness as hunters. Can they regenerate body parts? Although a few predator lores and comics have hinted at it, there is no clear evidence that predators can regenerate their lost body parts. They definitely lost their limbs in a fight, but they still continue to battle their opponent in that condition. It is worth mentioning though, that the predators use a certain blue colored goo called the metacomp to single or disinfect their wound, apart from stopping it from bleeding. For example, referring again to the movie Predator 2, the predator known as Greyback loses one of his mandibles during a fight with the main character, and it doesn't grow back, just implying the lack of their ability to regenerate lost body parts. As of yet, none of the movies have showcased predators in robotic limbs or prosthetics, but a certain predator by the name of Yaquita during the Rage War trilogy has been seen using a wheelchair-like machine after she lost her limbs during a fight. There are a few comic book examples hinting at this ferocious mega villain's ability to regenerate arms and limbs, but there are still no strong examples of a Yaoja with the same abilities. Do they have internal organs? In many cases, we have witnessed the internal organs of a predator resembling that of a human, thus answering that yes, it can be assumed that the predators have internal organs. In the Primal Hunt expansion of Aliens vs Predator 2, there was a rare glance into the insides of a predator when a Predalian chestburster chewed its way through the chest of a predator. The chestburster brutally shredded through the ribcage, lungs and flesh, thus right away killing an ancient predator. Additionally, some sources have verified that the predator has four, five or even multiple hearts, which allows it to sustain a massive amount of damage in combat. In a particular plot, it has been stressed upon how eating the heart of a predator will result in an unnaturally long life for human beings. Another subspecies of this extraterrestrial entity called the Hishq-10 produces a certain hormone from unique kill gland, which inculcates the capacity to drive the predator into a hysterical form of insanity. Lastly, some Yaoja are also rumored to inhabit reproductive organs, which might aid in their procreation. Our test results yielded something a little odd. 
Some predators create a strange hormone. One of the more unique aspects of the predator biology is the existence of the so-called kill gland. But not every predator is created with this ability, and this gland is only found in certain subspecies of predators, which secretes a hormone that can cause the predator to enter into a frenzied, uncontrollable state. This gland is apparently located between the collarbone and neck for the ease of pumping the hormone directly into the bloodstream of a predator. When a predator is in this state, it is even more dangerous and deadly than usual, as it becomes completely focused on killing and destroying anything in its path. While there is some evidence to suggest that the kill gland is a real aspect of predator biology, it is important to note that much of what we know about predators comes from fictional works, such as movies, comics, and novels. As a result, the existence and properties of the kill gland may not be entirely accurate or consistent across different works. In the predator universe, the kill gland is primarily associated with the Hish-Q-10 subspecies of predators, who are infamous for its particularly brutal and bloodthirsty nature, and are often portrayed as shock troops or assassins. It is unclear exactly how the kill gland works, or what the hormone it secretes actually does to the predator's physiology, but it's pretty much evident that if the secretion activity goes on for too long, the predator goes into a berserk rage, even if that specific type of predator doesn't exactly possess a kill gland. However, it is suggested that the hormone may be related to the predator's natural adrenaline response and may actually enhance the predator's physical abilities and aggression levels. Are the predators capable of shapeshifting? It should be noted that the concept of the predator being a shapeshifter was only used in the novelization of the first Predator movie and is not really considered canon in the Predator franchise. The novelization was probably based on an earlier version of the script, and the idea of the predator becoming a shapeshifter was likely scrapped during its production. In all subsequent movies, comics, and other media, the predator is portrayed as a humanoid creature with no shapeshifting abilities. It is worth mentioning, though, that in the earlier version where the predator was weaponized with shapeshifting abilities, it also had the capacity to take on any organic form by simply plagiarizing their appearance with one simple touch. The only exception in this case would be human beings who seem to be immune to this manipulation as the predator cannot shapeshift into a human. Apart from that, the predator could also turn into an intangible object with the help of its chameleon-like skin, which allows it to hide its real appearance. Apparently, this version of the predator had different agendas and took a keen interest in human beings after realizing that it was not capable of shapeshifting into a human, thus implying that the the sole reason of embarking on a human killing spree is actually to cut them open and study to understand the reason behind this limitation. But let's be honest for a moment, an over-the-top aggressive shape-shifting alien sounds horrifyingly cool for an antagonist. How does the predator race communicate with humans? Predators are technologically advanced extraterrestrial species that possess their own language, both in spoken and written form. Their spoken language is categorized by clicks, growls, roars, and snarls, while their written language is expressed in a pattern of dashes, not too different from humans. The predators regularly imitate human speech that they overhear, but it's unclear to what extent they can comprehend it. They also have dialects that differ from their common tongue, which unfortunately translators cannot understand. As full-time hunters, Predators do not have time for Prime Directive or other cool human stuff, as they still find enjoyment in traditionally hunting creatures that are weaker than they are, such as humans or even xenomorphs. They possess a level of weapon technology that is far beyond that of humanity. The predator race has developed its own form of sign language that allows them to communicate silently while they are hunting for their prey. It was evident that the predators wanted to teach this sign language to humans who were welcomed into predator clans. Surprisingly enough, they also understood the concept of humor and apparently laugh by vigorously clicking their tusks together. They also have been known to deliberately cause startling reactions for their amusement. While individual predators make different sounds, a high-pitched, shrilling, human-like cry is a very common sound emitted by them, mainly while using their medical kits to dress their wounds. Lastly, when given a compliment from a higher authority, similarly ranked predators will touch the hair of the one they compliment in acknowledgement. Overall, communication between predators and humans is often limited due to the language barrier and the fact that predators are typically portrayed as aggressive, violent hunters hunters rather than peaceful communicators. But that doesn't mean these brutes are any way less when it comes to communication with humans. What are the differences between male and female predators? In the Predators universe, there is no clear consensus on the information available about the physical differences between the male and the female predators. Some media portray them as nearly identical, while others depict female predators as having more human-like gender characteristics, such as breasts and wider hips. It is important to note, though, that these depictions are not necessarily consistent or canon across all forms of predator media. It should be noted that although comics fixate on the existence of a male and a female predator, the movies 
series are yet to feature the existence of a female predator in the franchise. In general, female Yaoja are depicted as fearsome warriors who prefer to hunt with their mates, and in a few rare cases, some female predators even prefer dying alongside their mates as well. Female predators tend to be more aware and methodical than males, but are also more impulsive and reckless. Predator society and family size are rarely depicted, but glimpses of it can be seen in some books and comics. The size and shape of the female predators have been inconsistent throughout the lore, and some depictions show them as bigger than the males and lacking female features, while others show them as the same height as males, but leaner and more aggressive, with having their breasts covered in armor. In some cases, their heads were shown to be more narrow than the males, alongside having longer dreadlocks and smaller eyes compared to the male predators. Depending on their individualist structure, the height of a female predator can range from 2 to 2.5 meters. As shown in the comic books Aliens vs. Predator War and Aliens vs. Predator Prey, children of the predators only lived with their mothers in nuclear families without their fathers. Overall, while there may be some discrepancies, it is generally believed that the female predators are formidable warriors, who are just as lethal as the males, but they may have a different approach to hunting and family life when compared to their male counterparts. Parts. How do the predators reproduce? Okay, so this entire extraterrestrial reptilian reproduction thing is a bit frisky because there is no evidence of the predator laying eggs or... But because of such well-synchronized and over-the-top aggressive storyline where the predators have been seen fighting, killing, or stalking, the makers might have forgotten to incorporate a few romantic scenes between these deadly intergalactic hunters. Wouldn't that be a treat to watch? But many story arcs in the Predator franchise have hinted that these extraterrestrial hunters are polyamorous as the good hunters with longer dreadlocks apparently gather up and attract numerous vibes with their skills and experience, but the ones with shorter dreadlocks are considered to be the nerds of the crew and are sadly left alone which kind of implies that they are being obsessed with the glory of war and hunting, kind of like the Vikings. Even extraterrestrial entities risk everything to get laid. It's kind of sad, but kind of funny when you think about it. Coming to the act of reproduction, apparently the female predators are very aggressive and dominating in the act, and overall take charge, which makes mating immensely pleasurable for the predator men. Now, coming to the part of children, the kids of the predators were procreated just as humans came out. So, no, they didn't exactly hatch from eggs, but they aren't exactly like all mammals. Now, the predators might not procreate like laying multiple eggs, but they sure do have an immensely high birth rate for a mammal, ranging up to spawning at least 60 kids over their entire lifetime. What remains unknown is if the kids are born in a litter, or do they have an insanely sped up reproductive cycle as compared to humans. Only the genderless clan of Hishq-10 have only 6 or 7 on average, and consider taking care of even the 6 kids as an annoying task. There was once a mention in a comic book story arc about a human predator, Machiko Noguchi, naked fighting with a tiny predator named Shorty, which sort of resembled a mating dance, but fortunately enough, no cross mating with humans have been found in the Predator franchise just yet, because unless they pull an avatar on this, it would kind of be gross. It is worth mentioning that the Predator movie franchise has not shown any female predators, even though they are bipedal creatures sharing a lot of similarities with humans. The reason behind this, as speculated by the Predator franchise fans, is that the women could be considered either as brood mares or probably run the entire Predator clan by taking the crucial decisions or raising the children, or for that matter, even inventing the gadgets while only resorting to the males for procreations and then just sending them out to play on different planets. What is so unique about Predator Blood? The Predator Blood is a bioluminescent fluid which is neon green in color and considered to be alkaline, unlike Xenomorph Blood, which is kind of an alien acid. During combat, Predators come in contact with acidic alien blood, but the effects on them don't really cause any harm as their alkaline blood neutralizes or cancels out the acid. Like human beings, Predators have non-toxic warm blood, but an added bonus is the depiction of healing abilities that it holds, which can actually be turned into a life-saving serum for human beings. It's also because of this that the predators are able to keep on with their fight amidst battles even after they've lost a lot of their blood. Because of the use of glow sticks smeared with KY jelly lubricant, it can be assured that the neon colored bioluminescent blood glows in the dark. When a predator is injured, its blood will react with the air and begin to glow. It should be noted that the entire media canon within the Predator franchise has toyed with the idea of a human being having drastically increased their lifespan after an encounter with predator blood. There is a video game from the franchise by the name of The Predator Concrete Jungle which addresses the matter and reveals how coming in contact with the predator's blood can increase the life of a mortal. Although it won't really put a stop to aging, or in other words, make them immortal, but it is still pretty cool to have a few decades added to your life. Overall, the unique blood of the predators is also an important resource to study or weaponize the predator's biology.
What does the diet of a predator look like? The dietary habits of predators are not clearly established or deciphered, but they are believed to have a carnivorous or possibly omnivorous diet. In the franchise, predators have been observed feeding on the meat from a slaughterhouse, as well as eating muskrats while skinning. They have also been seen eating the roots off an earth plant, possibly guided by instinct or even scent. In one instance, a contaminated and mutated predator cannibalized a member of its own hunting squad. These guys live for thousands of years, as seen via Calacta, the oldest living predator, and they are certainly not vegetarian to fight and survive for that long. It should also be noted that predators are skilled hunters and have been shown to prefer hunting for their food. In addition to hunting wild animals, they also hunt other sentient beings, such as humans and xenomorphs. In terms of hunting tactics, predators are shown to observe their prey before making a move. They typically go after the strongest or more skilled member of the group as they prefer to hunt challenging prey and also have a tendency to use traps and ambushes to catch their prey off guard. Overall, the predators are known to enjoy the taste of human flesh, and they have been seen consuming it in various media canons throughout the franchise, apart from the part where they're seen eating roots or pulling a Jeffrey Dahmer on their clans. The time when Predator transformed into a vicious creature. It's not a secret that technology-wise, the Predator race itself is much more progressive than the human civilization. However, there will be a day when humans will manage to create their own spacecraft and venture into the galaxy. The development of androids was one of the first technological advances made by the human civilization that the Predators seem to have trouble with mastering. Eldon, an android who was forcibly given the Black Prometheus goo injection, appears in the Aliens Predator story arc of the comic book series. As a result, his entire anatomy starts altering in the most terrifying of ways as he begins to mutate. It is later revealed that when a predator is bitten by Elden, it changes into a grotesque unique being which is more potent than this extraterrestrial creature's regular form. When the time came, this mutated predator had a feast on the flesh of its clan before brutally ravaging an entire crew of xenomorphs. <laughs> How can predators be killed? To defeat a predator, one needs to be well prepared and armed with the right weapons. It is important to understand the predator's strengths as well as its weaknesses. Predators are extremely skilled hunters with advanced technology and superior physical abilities. However, they can only be defeated with the right strategy. First and foremost, it is essential to understand that the predator has advanced heat detection technology and can easily spot their prey. Thus, one should cover themselves in mud in order to camouflage their body heat, making it harder for the predator to detect them. As Arnold Schwarzenegger did in the first Predator movie. The Predator has been seen with superior strength and agility, making it difficult to fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat, which makes it essential to keep a safe distance and avoid physical confrontations, and rather use a tactical approach on this deadly intergalactic hunter. Lastly, the Predator is vulnerable to certain types of weapons, including explosive devices and traps. In many arcs, it was witnessed that setting traps in their way catches the Predator off guard. Further use of explosives to inflict significant damage has also been a fail-safe deal. One can also amp push the predator as they have a strict coat of armor and will not attack unarmed or injured prey. In conclusion, defeating a predator requires a combination of tactics, strategy, and the right weapons. One should use their environment to their advantage, be well prepared, and remain calm under pressure to increase their chances of survival. The anatomy of a predator is so well crafted and intricately designed that it has the capacity to even colonize a planet if it wants. In conclusion, this is not the antagonist that anyone would want to mess with or provoke. And with this, we come to the end of today's video. Please let us know about your thoughts and opinions about this deadly intergalactic hunter in the comments box below. And if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to leave us a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, I'm Rylan. Have a good one and be safe. I'm one of you.